Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the holiday season of 2020. Coming to you live from the Circle R Ranch here in sunny, beautiful Toledo, Ohio, where it is, in fact, sunny, beautiful, a little bit chilly, but going to be like 50 today, so it's pretty damn nice for December. It's pretty nice out. It is an exclusive yeah. guitar Friday. Exclusive Orama, I'm calling it. Exclusive Orama, Penny's calling it. Little gal. She's throwing <laughs> it out there. It's like a Simpsons episode. Right. Uh, indeed. And uh, there's a lot to go through, so I'm just going gonna, I'm just, I'm just to go. Uh, thanks for tuning in, of course, as usual. We appreciate having you here. Uh, this is, uh, I've been posting pictures of this stuff all week on all the socials. This is the um, Tone Shop uh, in Dallas, Texas exclusive Jetstream 390 in um, Reverend Gold Flake. Uh, roasted Maple Neck, Powell Ferro Fingerboard, uh, the Deep Violin Brown Back, which we feature on all of our Metal Flake guitars. What a beauty. Mm-hmm. And we do this so that people what? can see the oh, sparkles. Yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what a joy to play, especially with all, I mean, anything. Yeah, that earthquake or afterneath, folks, that is, I get lost. I forget. Penny says, yeah, go ahead. And then I start playing. And then after a minute, I'm like, oh, shit. Camera's on and I'm being a fool. I'm up here playing a fool. Um, <laughs> That is the guitar through the Klon clone uh, and with a little bit of amp reverb on, and then you put on that Earthquaker. Oh, that's fun. Uh, the 390 is fun. That was the neck pickup, um, but all the positions are great. I'll leave the little Klon on. Position four, uh, neck and middle. that middle gives it a little bite and then uh, position two with that uh, clon clone on the position two sounds like if a Knopfler had a dumble playing salt in the swing and then the bridge pickup is your That's a fun sound, the Jetstream 390 exclusive in gold metal flake. For the Tone Shop in Dallas, great store. We do a lot of uh, exclusives runs with those guys, Grant and Tommy, good friends of ours yep. from the Dallas International Guitar Festival. And of course, their crew, Reese and Brittany and Leia and everybody that works there are all a bunch of fabulous people. So, And I know I left people out because they've gotten quite big. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they've got a hell of a crew down there. Right. And uh, also, they are some fine connoisseurs of the Fu Manchu. <laughs> Penny and I have hoisted, I love Fu Manchu. Ho ho hoisted some PBRs <laughs> and Fu Manchu shows with tone sh our Tone Shop friends. Um, so yes, here it is. This this is uh, yes, the cool gold top Jetstream 390. What else is on the horizon? Uh, I'm just going to start over here, LG, and I'm going to go this way, and we're going to talk about all the guitars that are on the wall. Do sound, it. Sound like a plan? Yep. Mind if I get them down? Sure. All right, I'm not going to plug them all in because we don't want to be here all day. I'm going to get all excited with that Earthquaker and that Klon Clone and be here all day long. This is special, folks. This is bad to the bone. They're all special. It gets old after a little while, me saying that they're special, doesn't it? This is a Gold Top Charger HB for Russo Music in sunny, beautiful Asbury Park, New Jersey. On the beach. Uh, another... Um, Great dealer with a cool history with Reverend. Uh, Scott over there is our good friend, and we do uh, numerous short runs there. Uh, Greg and I have also appeared there. Um, really fun store when we're not having a COVID. Right. Uh, one of my favorite places to visit. It's yeah, beautiful. more or less within walking distance of the arcade and everything that there is yeah. to see in Asbury Park, too. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's a really, really fun place. Uh, he has great taste in guitars. This is really fun. So, this is a uh, not a large flake like the Jetstream, but this is a sort of a traditional um, sort of a gold top color of uh, Reverend's Venetian gold, however, um, which isn't as green, I think, as you find from the other brand that shall not be mentioned. 
uh, our Venetian gold is much more attractive, I think. Uh, but we did go with this traditional brown back, which we have not done on this model, which uh, looks really cool. Gold top, brown back, dark roasted maple neck, power frail fingerboard, Reverend's Almico humbuckers. This is the Russo exclusive Charger HB. And then right next to that on the wall is, of course, Russo's Charger 390, which uh, this is from the first run a couple years ago, and I kept one because it's badass. Right here, this is for Chicago Music Exchange. Uh, CME, um, CME makes these choral guitars. Uh, not unlike Merchant City makes all those foam shrimp pinks, uh, CME really digs the choral, and they've, um, they've done really well with it over the years, and so they are continuing this run uh, they got some maple neck ones a few months ago, and so now they have some Powell Ferro board ones. This is the CME exclusive double agent OG in coral with the uh, roasted maple neck and the Powell Ferro fingerboard. These are all going to be shipping uh, next week, just so you know. I know that CME is taking pre orders for this on their website. And that does not have a brown back. And it does not have a brown back. No, it does not. But you know what does have a brown back? The brown guitar. This flip side music <laughs> exclusive. Uh, Flipside is uh, out in the Denver area, and they've been uh, plugging away with Reverend stuff for the last couple years. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first uh, exclusive run that we've done with them, and they were big fans of the Charger HB and Violin Brown. Um, they had moved a number of those and were disappointed when that guitar left the color palette in 2020. Of course, it is coming back into the color palette in 2021. Um, we have never done a double agent in Violin Brown, and this is, this is a rock machine. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, what a tough looking, what a tough looking guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, Karina body, violin brown top and back, um, roasted maple neck, maple fingerboard, uh, all the cool stuff that the double agents do with the P90 in the neck and with all that sort of mid-range open uh, P90 tone that you can get in the next position. Blended in with the rock from the bridge. Uh, we should hear this one. LG, we should, I know I said I wasn't going to do this. But, do it. But I'm doing it anyway. Do it. So, okay, so here's the neck, right? And I'm going to put that Klon clone on again because this would be the same tones that I was working with at the top. And that would be on the neck, and then let's go right to the rock and bridge. And, uh, and, and of course, they, they clean up lovely. Here's both pickups on with the clown clone turned off. And the, I think the thing I was doing at the top sounded something like. <laughs> Bass contour on the neck. And then, of course, the humbucker and the bridge on this thing will just do full metal. Sorry, lost my mind there for a second. The double agent OG for flip side music in violin brown. What's next, LG? Uh, the web. Well, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go right around that. Uh, I'm gonna go right around that. I did I it. I did it. I did it. Uh, this this came out a few weeks ago, but uh, while we were doing an exclusive Friday, uh, I could not mention Wildwood. This is their gorgeous Superior Blue Contender 290. Um, I, I was pretty happy to have Wildwood jump on the Contender to do an exclusive run this year, and this color really pops on this guitar. Um, it's a favorite of mine. <laughs> okay, th this one's mine. All right, I, I, there, I just, I said it. Oh, I, for crying out loud. Yeah, Penny didn't know. <laughs> Penny didn't know. <laughs> You're going to be seeing this one hang out in the demo room for a while, so. Uh, yes, this lives here, um, and, uh, but I know Wildwood has a few. I, they've been going through so many guitars 
so quickly that um, I, don't, I don't know if they've gotten all the ones of these that they got even listed. Uh, but if you want to see be some beautiful details and weights, I mean, this one, seven pounds, one ounce to the really? ounce, two ounces. Yeah, I mean, just That's real the cool. Carina, well, because it's a slab body, but it, and it's contoured, you know, oh. and with just the two pickups, and it, it, it's just such a lightweight little rock machine, man. These things are great. Uh, so this is the Wildwood Guitars Exclusive Contender 290 in Superior Blue. And then over here... This isn't necessarily an exclusive, but it is one of my favorites. And I'm just going to keep walking, walking around on the set. Do it. Oh, I did it. I'm walking. I had to put that up there where everybody could see how beautiful it is. It seemed like a shame to have it on the floor out well, of the chat, true. right, LG? That's a good point. I know. Uh -huh. um, this is a Waz. Uh, Jen Wasner from Y Oak. Uh, bon Iver, uh, Flock of Dimes. She's a busy lady. And uh, you guys know the story of this guitar. I talk about it a lot because it's one of my favorite projects that I think we've ever done here at Reverend. Um, when she was putting together her Flock of Dimes promotional material, she was using this, uh, some people call it dazzle camouflage, but that's not really what it what is, but it's it? loosely based on that. Optic, Optic interruption. interruption. Yes. Yeah. And um, lovely artist from Baltimore, Maryland, April Camlin, put together this pattern for her on a dress. And it was a really, or a jumper. It was really jump cool. Suit. Yeah, yeah jump, really, really cool looking. And she wanted a guitar to match it. And so Naylor and Naylor's daughter, Lindsay, um, took the pattern from the dress and worked it onto a guitar. And they did this sort of faux pick guard thing with the way the pattern moves, which is interesting because you're used to looking at these guitars and seeing this thing here. And, and the guitar has no pick guard, but the pattern changes. So it, it kind of plays with your head. I think it was really, really neat the way those two laid this out. Um, the guitar has been, I, I mean, Jen loves it, obviously, and, and uh, we're very, very thankful to have her on board. And she has been very prolific this year. There's been new Y Oak material. She's posting stuff yes. online. If you follow Y Oak or her, there's a lot of new music for you well, to check out. So, And then, I bl and of course, Bon Iver was supposed to do the big tour this year, and all right. that got canceled, and so right. that'll but all be on the next year. She did play it on... One of the morning news shows with Bon Iver. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah, I that do. was in the spring. Yeah. But um, it's out there. You can see it. Yeah, for sure. So uh, somebody had the idea. Well, this, how this guitar, I'm going to try to keep this short. I'm so sorry about that. Our other good friend, uh, Katie Harkin, who uh, tours with Sleater Kenny. Kinney? <laughs> Kinney. Kinney. And, um, and, but she has a band, Skylarkin, which is great. And she did second guitar for Jen on the Flock of Dimes tour. And she got one of the, the humbucker versions for herself. But Katie is a P90 freak. And those of you who have been following Reverend stuff for years may know that we did a short run for Katie mm -hmm. uh, back in like 2015, 2016 of Tricky Gomez 290s in satin cream hardtail. I think, I think we only made eight of those. Yeah. And she got one for the Sleater Kinney tour. And then I, she may have gotten two of those to use I, for whatever she, for her various projects. And then the rest of them we sold to the Chicago Music Exchange. And those are the only one, those are the only hardtail Tricky Gomez's out there. Uh, rare P, I think they're the only P90 Tricky Gomez's. It was a, just a fun, short little blip on the radar. Um, and so in talking to uh, Katie, what's up, LG? I think it was more like 2014. Could be. Because we, were, we weren't here yet. Okay. We, we, were, in, in old we were in Toledo. We were in Livonia. Yes. And then we did Tricky 290s for a while. Did we? Mm -hmm. but oh, not with hard Bigsby's? Tail. Yeah, with not Bigsby's. hardtail. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, anyways, talking to her this year, um, she had a, I don't know how it came up in conversation, but she said something about uh, how cool she thought this guitar was, and uh, she wished she had one with soap bars in it. And I, I'm, I'm here to oblige. It's what I do. <laughs> um, ask little gal. She'll tell you. Oh boy! Uh, and uh, but when when we we had that conversation, I saw the black soap bar pickups in this pattern and thought, oh shit, that's cool. Uh, in my mind, it was beautiful, and uh, so I called Jen and said, hey, uh, Katie would like to have one of your guitars uh, to play out and um, with soap bars. And if I, I'm not going to just make one because we don't make one of things here. Uh, so we did a short run of these guitars. There are eight of them only. Um, 
which quickly goes down to seven because the one that I hold in my hands is mine. And then it goes down to six because Jen Wasner, of course, has one so that she can increase her tonal palette by another guitar by having a version with some P90s in right. it. And then, and then we just sent one over to the UK to Katie the other day. So there are five of these available in the public. Um, I don't know where they all went. Uh, I think one, one went to the Tone Shop, one went to Merchant City, one went to Wildwood. I'm not sure about the other two. Um, the usual suspects usually jump in line pretty quick and they hear we're going to do something um, in, a, in a short form. It might be yes. worth noting yes. that we can't do one of, it, of anything before mm -hmm. anybody gets any yes. crazy ideas. No, one-offs are, are a thing. We got to no, And this is a guitar, of course, it's already in production. We, right. we just changed sort of one minor specification. Right. But, um, but yeah, and this, this is fun. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's dark roasted neck and the brown back with the cool optic interruption pattern and the P90s do the thing. Oh, they do the thing. They do the thing. They do the thing. Do the thing. What am I, Greg Cock now? I guess so. I got to stop doing that. <laughs> Like, what is that? And of course, you know what it is. Yeah. It's the ending to Over the Hills and Far Away. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. Yes. Yeah. Not a bad song if you like rock music, which I do. Exactly. All right. It's time for me to shut up. It is. It is. Well, it's time for me to shut up. Little gal is waving furiously, saying, oh, for God's sake, stop talking. People have all kinds oh, of Oh, shit, questions. here we go. Um, Scott Busey. I know Scott. Hi, Scott. He says, any new colors or special runs for the Sensei line? Not right now, Scott. I laid it all out there. This is all of the new stuff that we've got. This is all the exclusives. Yeah, this is all the exclusives that we've got. The Sensei uh, line, of course, um, as we roll into 2020, 2021, is Sensei Juniors and Sensei RAs. And, of course, we'll see more. The Sensei's not going anywhere. We're just, we're really busy with a lot of cool stuff. And so we pared it down to the best sellers for now, and then we'll, be, we'll bring back new stuff in the Senseis, of course. Uh, a limited edition sensei is a great idea, Lance from Wildwood. <laughs> um, actually, you want to know what though? That's not true because you know what is coming up, and it's it's going to be it's a good month away. What? Maybe six weeks away. The way time is going at the moment. What it, day is sim it? I know. Simultaneously, it seems like we're you know moving through molten molasses. Yes. Yeah, but, and at the same time, everything is just flying by. Uh, but. Um, at least on the Sensei platform, uh, Wildwood is going to have, at the top of the year next year, some Robin Fink models in, um, like Ruby Red okay. Flame Maple, Wine Red Flame Maple, that bright red that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robin really liked those and was interested in doing a thing. And so, yeah, there you have it. Uh, Johnny Cola. JC. Says, is there any chance ever to get a matching headstock on a limited sparkle? Make the curtains match the rug, is what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> I don't know, Johnny. I don't know what that would add to the cost. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no. You know, that would be. He says that I'm would sure be ridiculous. We just, you know, we we try to. He says I'm sure higher retail wouldn't bother anyone. No, and you're probably right. I, you're probably right. You know. Um, if we one of the ways we keep the overall cost down on all of this stuff and offer such a nice quality guitar is that we can we streamline a lot of the features, um, and being able to be somewhat uniform with the necks. I mean, and there's a handful of different bolt-on necks now. Don't get me wrong. We've got the you know roasted pile ferro, the non-roasted pile ferro, the the roasted maple fingerboard, and then there's the the bound ebony fingerboard with black headstock on the reeve, so we are rocking like four different necks at the moment. Right. Um, nothing is out of the realm of possibility, but I don't have any plans on doing that right now. But your suggestion is noted, my friend, and as well as whoever asked, I like reverse headstocks too, but we don't have any plans on doing reverse headstocks Nobody on any of them either. No, oh, come on. 
Not oh, what I, what, but I, you know what question I can't answer? I can head off at the pass right now. Check it out, everybody. That gold one over there, lefties. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't get lefties in the other ones, not yet, although Chicago Music Exchange has done lefties in theirs and may right. have them on their site. Right. Uh, I don't know what they have left. Right. They just didn't order them this time around. Uh, but we did, and again, very limited. There are four. The, this, the, the gold um, is available in uh, Pile Faro and Maple fingerboards. And same with the lefties. So there was... Dark or light roast? Light roast. Okay. That, that's the light roast Pile Faro, and then there's a, a light roast Maple. Um, but there's also lefties in both Maple and Pile Faro, both going to the Tone Shop. And then our friends over in the UK um, at Merchant City kind of split that run with the Tone Shop on the lefties. So four of the lefties are going over there. Cool. Neat, huh? Yeah. Very can you cool. dig it? I can dig it. Uh, the Detroit Blues says, My man. Any plans for a short run at Joe's Music in Michigan? I don't have any plans at the moment to do something with Joe. I'd like to, but we haven't. Um, I don't know. Joe hasn't. We haven't done. A, we haven't done a special run there. We probably should. Well, yeah, and maybe. I mean, the dealers sort of ask to do special runs. They do. So it's. They do. You know. And and we're we're getting we're we're getting to the point with the special runs too. Just not that this is any concern of any of yours, but we are so busy and so far behind on production models that it is going to be a while before you see a plethora of special runs like you're looking at now. Um, we're just not going to be able to do that next year. No. You know what I mean? And these were some things that I had committed to um, before things just blew up around here. Uh, so there's going to be uh, a benchmark of um, of there's going to be parameters. Yeah, there's there's going to be parameters, I guess, which is going to curb a little bit of this stuff. So enjoy it. <laughs> uh, easy question for you. Chris says, other than the pickups, is there any difference between a charger and a double agent? Nope. They are built right onto the same platform, my friend. So yes, the pickups are the differentiator between the Charger 290, the double agent, and the Charger HB, and the Charger RA for that matter, although the Charger RA does go to the dark roasted back on the flame maple top, but you can yep. dig it. A couple of people ask if there's a difference in tone and feel between the dark roasted maple and the Pow Faro. Aye, aye. Um, so the one. dark roasted maple necks, like I'm holding here, do have Pow Faro fingerboards. So if uh, just a direct comparison between the dark roasted neck and the light roasted neck, both with Pow Faro fingerboards, tonally, I, I, I think it's subjective. I really think it's more of a look thing. They both feel slick. They both have that slick sort of satin finish to them. And the darker roasted necks, in theory, have less moisture in them, so they're a little bit lighter. Um, but, and I don't, I really, I really think it's, it's just a vibe and, and a look thing more than it is an actual tone thing. Now between the maple and the pile ferro, I would say maybe the maple is slightly brighter, but there's people that would argue with me on that too. And so I'm never going to tell anybody that they are right or that they are wrong when it comes to these things. I'm just going to let them go. So, <laughs> follow up question. What's the difference between the one you're holding and the Charger HB, the neck on that behind Nothing. you? Nothing. Well, this is much darker. It looks much darker to me. Yeah, that's the beauty of wood. I know. <laughs> you know, uh, wood grain, it, it take, goes through the kiln process different and there's, you know, get, to get all like technical and weird about it, there are sugars in the maple that because it's a natural product, react to the temperature thing different, and some look darker than others, and some look lighter than others. And the Pile Ferro fingerboards, depending on where they're cut out of the slab of wood of the Pile Ferro, can be lighter or darker or more streaky or less streaky or whatever the case may be. Um, we had one. Oh, I think it is that gold one up there. Yeah, it has this beautiful yeah. black streak right Grab down it. the middle. Of that. I think that's badass. Grab it and put them side by side so people can see what you're talking about. So they're all different, and that's what makes them all special. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not shadow. That is in the woods, folks.
What else, LG? Come on now. Um, Mark says, any plans for foam shrimp or shell paint to be available in non-dealer exclusive models for 2021? Not yet. <laughs> uh, yes, there's going to be a Rick Vito Soul Shaker in limited numbers in the first quarter of 2021. You'll probably see them hitting stores around March. Um, and, but there's only going to be 12 or 16 of them total. And then we shall look forward to something new from Mr. Naylor and Mr. Vito after that in 2022. Uh, Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Hey, buddy. Thanks. Says your, your hat's breaking in nicely. Oh, it is breaking in very, very nicely. God, it is a beauty. It is a beauty. This is a comfortable, gorgeous, high-end hat that my man sent me here. I love it. Thank you. And then he asked, is there an approximate ETA on the new six-gun release? Kevin, I would like to know that as well. My man. I'll tell you this. Next next week in here, we'll show off all the new roundhouse colors. Sound like fun, LG? Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the other new color things that we have going on. We'll get we'll get on that program. Uh, the new six-gun. Excuse me, you guys. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. I was kept up late last night a little bit. Um, the new six-gun is we're just... This COVID is just kicking our supply chain ass. Uh, getting stuff in the building is a pain in the ass. And um, so we'll soon, I mean soon, we'll make the announcement. And we're going to end up making the announcement before we're shipping, which sucks because we were planning on being able to ship and make the announcement at the same time. But with the new six gun, I think we're going to have to spill the beans before they're actually heading out to dealers. Um, look for that within the next couple of weeks. Maybe we'll do that right before or during the holiday season. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, aha. No. Aha. Here she comes. She's aha a lot over there. Blood Honey, Blood Honey. Whoa. Blood which honey. I think is a band. Blood Honey. <laughs> Said, are you making any more Oxblood Charger 390s? Can't find them on your website. Although he sees the one hanging on the wall, wants to know if it's for sale. Um, contact Russo Music in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and find out whether or not they have any left. They got some this fall, so they should have them. And if they don't have them, tell Scott at Russo Music that you want to buy mine. <laughs> but I think they got them. Yeah, they should. Uh, John Montalbano. I know him. Yeah. Says, are your P90s wound traditionally or by a different formula? Nope, they're wound traditionally. They are, they are um, single coils. They're true single coils. Uh, so they do have the sort of, there it is. Hear that? I mean, I hear it. And then I go to the middle and it's gone. Well, I can make it louder with all the gain. I'll turn on all the gain. There it is. So yes, they do. They do have the 60 cycle hum. They are true single coils. Uh, Naylor, you, Naylor used to rock, run with this. This concept is very interesting. Um, when we were doing the phenolic bodied guitars, that he would use more powerful magnets and less windings on the coil to get similar output and to get a higher, to get a hot output. Um, and because there were fewer windings, they would be quieter than your typical. Uh, P90 pickup and um, it was a cool 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 idea uh, and we did that for for quite a while we've skewed a little bit more traditional with the Alnico magnets now um, they're just Naylor has voiced these pickups to have like a just a really present upper mid um, which they're supposed to have and then he paid careful attention to making them hotter than they normally are without being too hot without being overly aggressive but balancing properly in the different positions. So um, yeah, they're, they're good sounding traditional Alnico uh, P90s that we call 985s, LG. Yep. You know how I know that? It's written on a little piece of paper it right there. It says it on a piece of paper on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a repeat question from last week, but people may not have been here. Alexi says, Billy Corgan showed a prototype for the new model. When can we expect to see it on the market? I don't know a Billy Corgan. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, uh, William um, is very, very excited about a guitar that he and Mr. Naylor are working on, and it is rad. Uh, but we're not, we're looking at second half of 2021. We are still prototyping. Um, he's actually holding the first prototype in that picture, and, um, and the first prototype featured a, um, a different bodywood for us. And then he decided that he liked, he wanted to try some Karina ones. And so uh, we are making a round of Karina bodies for him. And once he gets that and approves that, then we'll be able to get them into production. We're hoping second quarter of 2021. And it is, it's a, it's a gorgeous guitar. Kind of fun that, you know what's neat is that he's so excited about it that he told everybody. <laughs> you right. know, we're trying, we have so many cool things going on that we don't, we don't want to pump the brakes on all the cool stuff that we have happening. Um, obviously, we have a major artist release. We have two major artist releases coming up shortly. Um, and uh, so we need to get those out of the way. Right, three. And then, oh, there's so much going on, you guys. It's awesome, but there's so much going on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian would like to know if we have any idea when the new roundhouse colors will be available in Europe. Those are shipping today, aren't they? Some are shipping today. So yes, they're, shortly, well, they're, however long they are that the roundhouses beat in the new six guns, and those are actively um, being processed and shipping. So it won't be long; they'll be heading out. Yeah. And I'll we'll post we'll be posting more pictures and stuff. I yeah. have a lot more pictures. I was just I was just into into these things as because we're shipping all these probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. These are all going to be on the way to their, their prospective dealers. So, And it might take a couple more days than you would expect to get from here to there. You know, I know Anderton's and Merchant Vinyl. City have some of, some of the new stuff on order, but there's yeah. sometimes it takes a while to get from here to there, right. Right. Um, especially this time of year. So I don't know exactly when they're going to be there, but uh, you can check in with, with everybody. You know, Peach guitars in the UK has a bunch of stuff on order. And they all, everybody over there has stuff on order. So you should be, you, you should be seeing yeah. them everywhere. Andy <laughs> Taranaki and everybody. I just can't stop messing around yeah. with this thing. You have to stop. You have work to do. No, I, I don't <laughs> want to work anymore. I just want to play. Uh, Mark says, if the spacing between neck and bridge humbuckers is shorter, will rail hammer pickups still sound as great? Yes, and I have put them on uh, a couple of 24 fret guitars where, because, yeah, I think what he's referring to is the sort of... Um, well, some brands uh, the, just put their well, the, closer, right? It's more than that, LD. Okay. Uh, like your uh, Satriani versus Vi. Vi's got 24 frets on his guitars. The Having 24 frets, your fretboard stops here. Mm -hmm. So the placement of your neck pickup is closer to the bridge pickup closer to the neck pickup naturally because the fretboard is longer. Um, Satriani plays 22 fret necks like we use here because he likes the uh, he likes the the harmonic to be under the neck pickup that there's something that he hears in his ears he likes the neck pickup to be what would be sitting underneath of the fifth fret harmonic or the 24th fret harmonic or however you want to look at that he prefers the neck pickup to be in that position and it does make the neck peak, pick up deeper and warmer because the further you get away from the bridge, the warmer the pickup, the closer you get to the bridge, the brighter the sound, right? Um, because, in, and you can't really see this on here, but I can see it sitting here under these lights. The string vibrates, and the string vibrates in the cycle that creates the note that you're listening to, the tone that you're listening to, right? And while the string is vibrating the same note right next to the bridge, the vibration of the string is smaller, which is why the sound is brighter and more focused. And the further you get away from the bridge, the wider that vibration is and the warmer the sound is. Um, so this guy's question is, on a 24 fret guitar or a 27 fret guitar, like a Hamer Diablo, sorry, I'm a fan, um, <laughs> where, where you actually, you still have a neck pickup, it's just closer to the bridge pickup, is there enough of a differentiation in sound and do they still sound good and the answer to that is yes they sound killer um, there should be some demos over on the uh, Railhammer page of 
myself and Addie, Andy Padelin from Sponge and a few other people that we've had in here over the years playing some of the house, the Railhammer Ibanez models and uh, comparison models that mm -hmm. have uh, yeah. that have the pickups closer together than you would find in a Rebel guitar. So that 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 is out there, and then you can't see it, but we got this killer 50 watt EBH head over here that's just dying to do some Railhammer videos, dying to. Dying. And I'm gonna have to get up off my ass and get in here and play some drop D riffage, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we're gonna have to pull you away from the very exciting world of taxes and banking. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. Oh, COVID. Uh, Rick asks if the new Outfield Ivy jet stream will be available with dark roasted necks, pow ferro, or just maple? Just maple for now. Um, we have a tendency to move those things around. Right. You know, um, like maybe in a year that one will go to pow ferro. You That'd know, if nice. it does well, it would be very nice looking. But for now, it's just um, available in uh, maple board. Yes, yes, indeed. And that outfield ivy looks killer with the cream soap bars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. And Eric said, the Space Hawks seem to be on back order. When do you expect them to be available again? They are shipping just slowly. I apologize for that. Um, we have, the Space Hawks are moving through the building. They are just all sold. Uh, and so, um, I know we'll be shipping, I know we're going to be shipping about a dozen of them, I think in late January, early February or something like that, and, and then I'm not sure where it's going to be after that, um, but it is, it is an active product. It is, it is going out there, guys, yeah. for sure. So, Stuff is slow and if, down Eric, if you're that. the guy that, that ordered one from GC, um, I actually found out what happened with that, and you are welcome to uh, just shoot me an email. Um, in Facebook Messenger again, if, if that is in fact this Eric, I think that guy's name was Eric. If, yeah, uh, if that's sure. you, I, I actually got a little more information on that. And if you want to know what it is, just drop us a line and I'll talk to you. Is there anything else, LG? Uh, Gary, oops, it moved on me. <laughs> Gary said, any chance you'll be carrying white straps in the near future? Uh, the white strap question again. Gary, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, buddy. Uh, we've had a couple of suggestions for a white strap with black lettering yeah. on it. Um, <laughs> Joe spent a lot of time on those straps. I mean, it was it, it, Joe had some ideas, and then the the prototypes were you know sort of made off of the factory line at Levy's, and so they take a little while to get done. And then Joe wanted to make some changes, and we basically went back and forth on those straps since last winter dam. <laughs> like a year. Uh, and again, COVID screwed up a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, your suggestion on that is duly noted. I think that that would look really nice. Um, the way it would be done is it would be the black seatbelt material on the strap. But where's my strap? I had one in here. I feel like a dope. Is that the one you um, sent to no. Irvine? No, I had a gray one in here that I, I've been using because I like it. Oh, it's right next to you, LG. Toss me that bad oh. boy. All right. I got it. Yeah. Um, the black seat melt material is going to be universal. Notice all of the beautiful metal buckles on this thing. There is nothing cheap about this. Uh, nice leather ends, nice and tight, and they, they fit very, very snugly with our strap buttons, which have a wide flange on them. So when you put the strap on here, hey, yeah, it's a pain in the butt to get on there. But when you get it on there, it is, it is very, very secure because of that wide flange. And um, I like your idea of doing a white one. It would look with particularly black nice with that guitar. It would. Yes, it would look nice with just about anything. So True. a duly noted, but we're not going to see it like it's not anything that we can do quickly. Um, they have a long turnaround time at Levy's because that is a busy ass place. And um, and then we have another round of the colors that we're offering now on order. So it would have to be even after that. So not to bore you to death with all of that kind of stuff, but but that's the reality of it. So but <laughs> your um, your suggestion is duly noted. I think it would be cool. So. I will mention that to Mr. Joe. Uh, Cola asks, and it's not, but just 
uh, that square thing is a pick up or a pick holder. Uh, it is not. It's not. It's just a patch. No. no. Sorry, guys. You know, just one of those little sewing machine things. You could take the stitches off the top and Seam stuff ripper. your picks in there if you Seam want ripper. to. Seam ripper. Yeah, LG just says. A little, yeah. Listen to that. That sounds sweet. Well, Me and my. Well, I didn't even tune this one before we started playing today, LG. What was I thinking? I don't know. <laughs> we set this up a couple weeks ago, and it's been sitting in here with. Uh, Humidifier, ladies and gentlemen. LG always likes to remind everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and take the reins on that. Mm -hmm. Winter is here if you live in the Northeast, the Midwest. <sighs> Furnaces are kicking on. It's drying out. Uh, the roasted maple necks are better at uh, the humidity thing than the traditional ones are, and we have much less fret sprout than we used to have and much less moving of the necks due to humidity changes and things of that nature. Um, but those things are still a possibility as the humidity levels plummet. So, humidify your guitars. And remember, as a general rule of thumb, if you're comfortable, your guitars are comfortable. And yes, this applies to electrics as well as dem acoustics. Oh, dem acoustics. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. So much cool stuff, man. Um, but and I appreciate your time and giving me your time. And um, have a happy lead up to the holiday season. We'll see you next Friday. We'll show off those new roundhouses and whatever else that's new that we can get our hands on in the right. building. Right. Sound so like Zach a plan? Doesn't sell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever Zach doesn't sell. Yeah. She didn't want to do it. Come on, girl. That was just weird. She just doesn't want to cooperate today, does she? Have a nice weekend, everybody. Okay.